that's the exciting part for me. What you get, you know, as the years go by and you see that small little uh, cherry tree turn into a 10 foot monster that fills up buckets of cherries. So that's the excitement part for me that you can kind of see this uh, plant, you know, over the seasons go and develop and, and get bigger and give you kind of what we all want is that gratification of like, I nurture this plant, now it's gonna nurture me. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of Green Acres and our guests. These general gardening tips and suggestions may work for you, as well as those from alternative sources. When using any garden products or tools, read and follow all label directions. And learn how to make your yard summer strong at BeWaterSmart.info. The Green Acres Garden Podcast is the podcast dedicated to helping gardeners hone their growing skills while we celebrate our love of plants. So whether you're new to growing or a seasoned gardener, you're sure to learn something new. Join the fun as we have conversations with world-class growers, passionate green thumbs, and professional garden experts from Green Acres Nursery and Supply. Listen every week. We'll answer questions you didn't know you had. And away we grow. Hello again, and what's up, all you gorgeous gardeners and beautiful botanists? Welcome to another episode of the Green Acres Garden Podcast, the home to all you plant people and people who are chlorophyll curious. Uh, Welcome back again. We got a great episode for you. I'm your host, Kevin Jordan, the coastal wildflower, because I went on a little trip this last week up the coast, uh, Bodega Bay, uh, Fort Bragg, whatnot. It was nice, uh, down to 58 degrees in the daytime. It was, Austin, y- you missed out. You would have loved it. that's lovely. Uh, it was a great time. Uh, saw some beautiful, just gorgeous plants in the wild, buddy, um, all along that coast. It was incredible. It made me think of actually uh, Greg, because he was talking about the Thule fog coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't see any Thule fog, but where we were at on the coast, we were driving through the clouds, where you're just, you just Whoa. see the clouds kind of blowing across the hillside, and, you know, just drive. It just felt so nice. It was a good contrast to the scorching, bitter heat uh, of the valley. So good times were had, and I have to mention it only because uh, by this time that this episode drops, yeah. I will have gone back to school. And, oh, that's uh, right. Back to work with me. Uh, and so uh, it's going to be, yeah, the, the summer's over, friends, for me. Um, womp, it's, womp. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, but Austin's living that good life. Let's say hello to Austin. Oh, hello, hello. Thank you, thank you. Um, that's really cool to hear that you got to see the ocean, man. I'm jealous. Gorgeous. Dude, Every, amazing plants. I, I just love seeing the ocean. But yeah, you're right. The plants out there, there's like, it's a whole nother climate. So the, Super, the yeah. plants are different. But, but you know what I noticed? People uh, who did have landscaping in their yards, a lot of nephophia. Oh, really? The red hot poker. I would see just massive, just clumps of it. And it's a beautiful plant as he's... You know, be two, three feet tall, high spikes that look like glowing hot pokers. Hummingbirds love them, and I saw a bunch of them out there. So it was kind of nice to see see some uh, something really beautiful. But yeah, everything was a little different out there for sure. Right on. That is cool. So uh, only thing that's different over here is I've been harvesting. You know what? I should feed you some of my tomatoes. You're always bringing me food. Let's do it. I've yeah. actually got stuff I can give you right now. I'm looking been, forward to it. Uh, yeah, enjoying the tomatoes I've uh, been harvesting. Not the biggest crop, definitely not a bumper crop. Is there a phrase for a uh, little bit of a little underwhelming amount of harvest? Gosh, there's got to be. Um, we got to come up with one yeah. if there's not one. We, uh, that's, yeah, well, yeah, we'll get, we'll get <laughs> okay. there. But uh, I'd love to share it with you. But enough of that. Let's go ahead and jump into our topic this week. I know we're talking irrigation, Kevin. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, and you're always uh, talking about how important drip is and all this other stuff. So uh, why don't you set it up for us? What are we getting into this week? We're getting into the other side of the coin of success for gardening. We talk about a lot of the right plant in the right place or, you know, putting all the effort or a lot of effort into amending your soil, adding mulch and compost and really be- building up your soil so the soil can kind of support whatever plants you choose to grow in it. But the other side of that coin is proper watering. And an irrigation system uh, is the best way to do it. Irrigation is any system that you utilize to eventually deliver water to your plants. And they can come in a lot of different forms. Uh, You've seen them in our lawns where they pop up early morning and you can hear them uh, spraying away and watering our uh, our landscapes there. You can sometimes hear them uh, pop on. I love it when my my drip system comes on when I'm walking the garden. You can hear it and it starts to push out all the air in the lines and you just know something good's about to happen. (laughs) Because what that means is now your plants are getting water. And there, that's water you didn't have to hand deliver. Uh, so hopefully in today's episode, uh, I will convince you to put down that hose, at least for a little bit. I love hand watering as well. But ultimately, all the success that I've noticed this summer in the garden has come from the landscapes 
that I'm working in that have a proper irrigation system uh, set up with a timer going to the plants. All the ones that have that are looking great. They've survived the heat, 105, 110, no problem. The plants got a little hurt. Some of their fruit got a little scorched, but they're doing great. And it's because the irrigation system has been set up. I've, you know, you practice with it, you, you customize it, it and change in. it, you, you dial it in, and then you never stop doing that. You, uh, I'm probably still going to do more things to these systems to make sure you just reinforce them, uh, make them just a little better, a little sharper each year. And th- things grow, uh, trees mature, and plants have different needs throughout the, you know, throughout the seasons, if not just as the years go on. Uh, so it's fun to kind of play with them. For me, it is the thing that'll kind of set you apart. From, from struggling in your garden or your landscape, if you're having to hand water a lot of your pots and containers, even the irrigation systems that we're going to discuss with our guest, Carlos, even with those systems, you can set them up on uh, to your containers and your pots. Actually, you have one outside, right? Yeah, I so I have a small growing area in my backyard, and it's all in containers, and a lot of them are raised up off the ground. And t- there's a spigot coming out of my house nearby. So I went and got... It was like really cheap. It was almost like the most beginner you could start. It was Little like kit. A, a kit. I think it was a rainbird kit. It was must have been just twenty or thirty bucks, and it allows you to set drip up into like eight different spots. Love it. And I think I expanded it to get a few more containers than eight, so I'm at like ten or twelve. Um, so there's expansion kits for it too. But at first, I was scratching my head, and it didn't take too long for me to figure it out. Um, <laughs> if you can put together an Ikea desk table, then yeah, you can definitely run some drip. I love that stuff. I do really actually enjoy like building stuff, Legos and all that. But uh, this was an easy project. I have to say in one evening, I was able to set it all up. And you're right. like The plants that have it, are doing well. I think it's that consistency. Your garden looks good, dude. Thank you. It doesn't feel that special, but I appreciate that. No, it looks good. And if you didn't have, I honestly think if you didn't have that irrigation system set up, you would have been struggling because it'd be, you'd be busy, um, as a bee watering that thing morning, day and night for sure. Oh yeah. And, and the ones I do have to hand water, I never hand water them at the same time or the same exact amount. So it's inconsistent by nature and those plants don't look as good. You're absolutely right. But yeah, the thing I set up is, I guess, for containers and it it works really, really well. There's a timer connected to the spigot and out goes the, the pipe and then I just split it after every container it connects to and then it it just goes on down the line and it hits them all. It's for easy. sure. So whether you have an uh, in-ground landscape, uh, a mature garden, even your lawn, it all requires proper irrigation. Uh, there's there's ways of updating, adjusting, and really getting the most out of your irrigation system. So uh, we have a great guest. Uh, Carlos is the manager over at the Elk Grove store, uh, the Green Acres location. So he kind of seen it quite a bit of it. Uh, folks are coming all the time with uh, broken pieces, pipes, or just the desire to kind of expand their garden or do something interesting with their landscape. And sometimes that requires irrigation. And I'm telling you, it's what sets you apart from struggling and having just wild success is a proper irrigation system. And uh, whether it's sprays, micro sprays, drip, what have you, um, they're all worthy uh, of checking out and learning about because it's really, it's it's the way to go. Thank you, Kevin, for uh, jumping into that. I'm excited now to uh, go to our interview with Carlos. Uh, he is the store manager at the Elk Grove Green Acres, and we got to sit down with him and talk everything irrigation, and uh, it's a really great interview. So let's go ahead and jump to that now. Here we go. I'm Carlos Valdez. I'm the store manager here for the Green Acres in Elk Grove. And today we're going to talk some irrigation. Well, perfect. Let's get right into it. For maybe somebody who's brand new to gardening, growing, just irrigation seems like an expensive word. Um, what actually is it? No, it's really not. It's, it's applying what you have. So, you know, so if where homeowners have water, uh, you just need a source of water to your home. And then there's different methods of doing it. So we're here to provide answers for those questions, yeah. For irrigation systems right now, what do you think are some of the, uh, you, that you deal with a lot of customers coming here, what are some of the common uh, commonalities of some of these questions? What are some right. of the mistakes maybe you're seeing with when it comes to um, the production of their plants right. or just things just breaking and need replacing? Yeah, I think the mo- one of the most common things for, for the average homeowner or, or gardener is how do I make what I currently have work with what I'm currently wanting to use? You know, so retrofits, a lot of things, just simple things that maybe somebody inherited a home that now had sprinklers um, and they no longer have a lawn. So how can they irrigate? How can they water their plants with that system? So 
a lot of those, those are retrofits or just making, you know, making it work for what you have. And we offer those, those, uh, you know, those options here. So that is probably the most common. And then number two is probably things breaking down over time. So people coming in with the, the problem that they need a solution. This, I, would, I would never shovel through uh, a forgotten <laughs> irrigation tube. I've never yeah, done that. Yeah, no. yeah, <laughs> I'm right. just kidding. Um, so it's something like that. I think those are the most common is how can I make it work and how can I fix this? You know, this is where I'm at. And a lot of, a lot of people are, you know, this is not something you need a degree um, in engineering or anything to do. Uh, technology has gotten it to where the tools and the product is a lot more user friendly. So uh, a lot of people are surprised that you know the job doesn't take that long and not that much work to get. get it. Well, that's pretty cool that you bring that up because a lot of like do-it-yourself home projects always kind of seem yeah. very doable and easy online, and you see the video, the thirty-second video of it. But then when it comes to it, you're like, oh, I got to go buy a skill saw and I need all this expensive equipment. Yeah. With irrigation, I feel like if, you know you got a tube cutter and yeah. there's a few different tools you need. It's not very yeah, the yeah barrier yeah. to entry is low. No, yeah, there's there's probably your essential tools, you know, and a lot of um, retailers, including ourselves, we have you know your entry level kit, uh, your cutters, your um, you know a uh, couple of tools to remove broken uh, risers and things like that. But I would say in a small um, you know bag of eight to 10 tools is probably all you're gonna need. And the good thing with that is you will be, have that for 10, 20 years. Like, you know, you'll be passing those tools down to, to relatives. So there really is not a big um, need for, for too many tools. And, and a lot of these tools, you can do multiple things with them. Right on. Well, you brought up the retrofits, um, you know, adapting an old system. Um, I've done this a, a bunch in my own yard and I actually have more to do. Yeah. So what, where would someone begin? Uh, what, what are the first steps? Because I think we get a little um, scared sometimes right. going on a project. But when it comes to irrigation, I think it's one of those things where um, it seems a lot more sophisticated than it really is. Yeah, and yeah, it's very yeah. doable. Yeah, and I think some of it is the misconception that, you know, you see these videos of, of things gone bad and people are scared to jump in. Um, I, I would advise that the first thing that person, that homeowner wants to look at is how are they getting water to their property? Is it coming through their, their city line? Um, is it coming from a well? You know, those kind of things. So really take a look at your, um, your existing um, home and see what you have. And then um, it's, you, know, you can come in with pictures. We always recommend people you know, bring us pictures. But you know, knowing what you have, because whoever's going to be helping you through this um, is going to need that. That's just one of those basic things. Is that like looking for the valve shutoff yeah. where that actually is going to feed your home water? Yeah, look, look and see if you have you know, your, your shutoff, your, you know, your, your traditional um, you know, shutoff water valve there. Um, and, if that, and then you see actual anti-siphon valves coming through. So now you have it, you have that system. Um, maybe a homeowner could also just have a traditional water spigot, and that's all they they are seeing. You can actually make a retrofit off of that. And I've seen some of some yeah. of the examples in your aisle, and it's pretty nice. Where it just shows you just hooking just connectors right yeah. to the spigot. Yeah, I think that's where the technology has changed. That that there's so much um, more more options that there used to be. You know, you can even set up a, a manifold so you can still have a garden hose and run irrigation off the same pipe. That's nice. You know, so, um, you know, those are options. So I would say starting with that, you know, bringing, uh, having pictures, the terminology and a lot of the different things can get also people probably feeling overwhelmed that there are so many gallons know, per hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and a lot of it is, um, is there because it's very much technical for your, on the, uh, the end user. So if someone who does this for a living, this, are, this is something that they do, but, um, you know, gallons per hour, you know, flow, pressure, um, all those things come into play. But if someone's just irrigating their lawn and you're watering plants or your grass, um, it's gonna be very simple. So those things do matter, don't get me wrong, but it's gonna be something that, you know, if someone was to come in and ask me, um, that would be something that I could bring up, but it's really not critical, you know, for a home. Well, uh, as it pertains to a retrofit or converting um, a pre-existing, you know, vertical, you know, um, above surface yeah. spray system that we're used to our sprinklers, um, when it comes to actually doing that conversion, do we have to worry about the water pressure? Because I noticed a lot of the, the drip systems, they, they require right. kind of reduced pressure. Yeah, they're, you know, when you're expanding into using your old sprinkler uh, risers and then tapping into those for water, the water flow and pressure does come in because um, you can only sustain so much water for a line. So if you're using your, and, and the size of the pipe will matter too. A homeowner could have a half inch um, PVC pipe and they want to run this hundreds of feet with multiple, maybe dozens of outlets, that's not gonna work. You're just not gonna have enough water. Um, you know, and we'll make those conversations with, with the homeowner and let them know they can upgrade to three quarter inch so they can carry more water. Uh, most homes are gonna have either half inch or three quarter inch underground pipe. 
um, and that'll be sufficient. Um, if someone lives on a large property, they might be you know, surprised that they have one inch or bigger you know, to carry that much more water. Um, but then what I usually work with that uh, person is to let them know, okay, you half half inch, you don't wanna you know, gut your whole system, that's okay, but I will have to let you know what your limit's gonna be. Um, and then you know, if you're selecting plants, maybe that's gonna come into play. So you know you can only get so many trees water, so many shrubs. Um, but if you're not and you're um, wanting to water what you have already, then it's gonna matter where we set up the your tubing. You know? So there, there's many options. Um, I feel that most 95% of homeowners could get by for what they have. They just have to use the right product. You know? And the, you know, here at Green Acres, that's one of the things that we do. Now, what is the benefit of, of converting from that traditional spray system to a drip system? It's 100% how much uh, less runoff you're gonna have. So when you're using sprayers, you're, you're basically hoping that your soil is uh, receptive to all that water. Most soils are gonna um, be you know, over, over watered really quickly. You're gonna have a lot of runoff. So you know, up to- and You might have overspray going onto the concrete or yeah, in your you neighbor's yard. Yeah, you may be watering walkways, you may be watering your hardscaping, um, places that really don't need that. Um, so you wanna make sure you focus uh, the water to where it needs to go. I would say, if anything, maybe just the lawn and a specialty plant could benefit from overhead watering. But for the most part, stick with getting the water to where the plant needs it at the soil. Um, you know, that'll be the other thing is with irrigation, it does tie into having good soil. If you have good soil, usually the water gets to where it needs to go. What's nice too is I've noticed, especially with your guys' aisle, um, when it comes to drip system, not only can you have water just drip, drip, drips, you know, right at the soil level, but you can have a little versatility in having micro sprays yeah. and, and smaller rising um, verticals. Yeah, yeah, there's, and that's where the, all these options come into play. Um, having something just drip, like you're saying, drip around the, the rose bush and having a couple of emitters, you know, provided that water. But you may have a bunch of ground cover that's just growing and, and sprawling through that area where you could have a, a couple of little six inch uh, sprayers that can cover 50, 60 square feet. Um, and you're still getting the water directly to where it's needed, um, you know, it'd be, It'd be harder to get that many drip emitters uh, through 50 square feet of, of ground cover, but a couple of the risers, uh, minimal water, and it gets the job done. For sure, and I, what I love about it, and you brought this up earlier about just the valves. I love uh, as many valves as yes. I possibly can add to yeah. a system just because it offers a lot of redundancy or uh, the ability to kind of customize and manipulate through the seasons. I can turn an area off. Right. Um, even some of those risers, uh, I've noticed, have, have valves that you can actually open it up and yes. close it off. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, those are also good options to somebody who has maybe a evolving or a, a changing landscape throughout the year. Uh, certain plants need more water at certain times, and then they can go into dormancy, and maybe the water uh, that is utilized is not as... Uh, you don't need as much volume. So you can put in those inline valves and, and mo monitor your water. Also it comes into if you're gonna be out of town. You know, So there's a lot of irrigation that uh, this time of the year, a lot of people are on vacations and you wanna make sure you come back to your home being watered the right way. So valves and timers and things like that come into play for that. Now, what are the main components? We brought up that you need to have like a pressure reducer, and I've seen some that you guys carry where it's um, like an inline, where it'll actually have uh, a filter, it looks like, built into it. How, um, is that necessary to have those, those micro filters on a drip system? Because I know those emitters are pretty tiny. I mean, they just weep out little drips and drops. Yeah, the, when it comes to irrigation, especially drip irrigation, um, it's a really good concept. It's a really good efficient way of watering, but there are gonna be a couple of variables that you wanna mine for. Um, one is your water source is likely gonna have minerals and different uh, deposits. So a filter is, is key, is handy. Um, those emitters will clog over time if, if there's not you know, the cleanest water you could use. And then the pressure reducer actually gets everything to work the same way every single time. So that is really what makes everything balance out. So you have the same amount of water being utilized. So I would definitely recommend someone who's going into drip irrigation, get your pressure reducer. Um, you wanna have it 25 to 35 PSI. That's what these reducers are gonna do. Uh, your traditional water pressure from the city is anywhere up to 60 PSI, depending on where you live. So it's a little bit too much water pressure. And then the- I've um, broken a few in my day, <laughs> not knowing in my yeah. early days for sure. I'm like, pop! You right. see an emitter explode, you're like, I did something wrong. Exactly, yeah, and, and then the filters is what keeps your consistency. It also cuts down on your maintenance. I love that. Yeah. And I noticed those emitters uh, are those, um, those filters 
You can just unscrew them. What, maybe, what would you suggest? Once a season, once a year, once every few years? How often do we need to clean these? Yeah, those filters, uh, once a season, definitely, especially for someone growing edibles, maybe someone's growing vegetables uh, the summer months and the winter months. So if that system's gonna be utilized on something as critical as growing something you're likely gonna be eating, um, you wanna make sure your filter's clean out there on the season. Um, and yeah, the technology has gotten now where you can easily unthread the filter, take the cartridge to the water sink, and then just flush it through. And it's, it's actually a fun way to see how cleaner your water could be. Um, you'll, you'll see that firsthand with the filters. When it comes to adapting to drip, I, I know you can, you can do a whole system where you convert it out and now you have an entire new system in your front yard that's all drip. But I've also seen uh, the smaller ad uh, adapters where it's just for a single riser. Yeah. Uh, have you seen those and, yeah, yeah. and do you like those as well? Those are exciting. That's one of those things that, um, you know, we have them here and they do really well, especially for a smaller property. Um, you have a single riser, maybe you just planted a couple little tropical plants or maybe a fruit tree. Um, you can go and designate that riser to just be a single output. Um, and there's ones from single, double, all the way to eight now. So Eight um, ports? Eight ports. It's a manifold with eight little ports. Um, and they have little flow adjusters so you can see which plant needs more water than the other. So it makes it really fun. And it, the footprint is really, really minimal. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's a small little, looks exactly. like a plastic little UFO or yeah, something. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. It's like a little UFO saucer at the top with all the lines going through it. Um, and yeah, uh, they're really easy to use. Um, they also really hold up really well. Yeah, I've, I've loved using those myself and just it's I think for somebody starting out with drip it it's really good to kind of dip your toe into that water because they're not difficult it's the, like I said the barrier to entry on those is really low I mean you literally unscrew right. your valve with the water turned off pop one on and essentially then connect some tubing and yeah I mean you're really talking running. yeah you're talking minutes uh, for this installation you know and it's something that we what I like to do here is I usually give the customer the, the, the person here the client kind of a live demonstration. I'll grab a riser and kind of put the construction in front of them. Um, and then really opens up their eyes and they get to see that it, it just takes a couple of, of little tweaks here and there. Um, and, you know, so we like that. And irrigation is a lot of it is construction and people get a little bit intimidated. But once you get to sh demonstrate them in person um, and we have videos, that the, you know, people could use as a resource also, really kind of breaks down the, um, that, you know, that thought of it's gonna be very challenging. You know, and I think once you get over that, that, that negative thought or whatever, it's kind of empowering yeah. once you start playing with your irrigation, um, seeing positive results, spending less time worrying about your watering, and then having, I noticed for me, all the landscapes I've had to take care of this summer, the ones that are on a drip system or an irrigation system that, are, that's, that have a timer, those are, those, all those plants are doing fine. It's yeah. all the other periphery landscapes and areas that, uh, that I'm working with that don't have the irrigation where I'm having, where I'm struggling. Yeah, I mean, it, it really comes down to consistency. So the, these watering, these uh, drip systems or having something dedicated on a timer, even if it's a, a smaller timer, that's what gives you consistency. Um, and that's what I think people start to feel more empowered about what they're doing. And we do have that frequency of customers that come back and say, look, I did this, I feel good about it, I wanna expand, I wanna do more. Um, and yeah. that's when it gets really fun for me too. If somebody has a system right now and they kind of did what I mentioned earlier and they accidentally forget or they were working with somebody or, and then you, you forget where the tube was and you slice through it with a tool and then you notice that when the water, you, you wake up the next day and you're like, whoa, where's all the, the mulch has moved, there's a big yeah. pit of mud and water. Um, What's the best way to fix something like that? And how difficult? Yeah, something like that. So when you get damage from, you know, um, many different things, um, it could be sometimes animals, it could be children, it could be tools, um, it could be the line just broke down over time. Um, it's a quick fix. You're gonna be making a, a cut and replacing the damaged section. And then we have uh, different types of couplers. Uh, so the coupler would be the, the item you're gonna be coming into Love the nursery. Love a good coupler. Yeah, you're gonna come into the nursery and say, I need a coupler today. Um, and then we can show you those options. There'll be barb, there'll be compression, there'll be universal sizes. And I would say it's probably about two minute repair. I mean, it's really gonna yeah. be simple. Um, and we'll walk you through it and we'll kind of show you hands on you know, what it takes. All right, so now let's, let's imagine that we've got an irrigation up system updated. Um, it's ready to rock. How are we gonna know like, what, what are the best practices for actually utilizing the irrigation systems that we do have? Um, how deep do we need to water? How do we even know that we're watering deep enough? Right. Um, how do we avoid overwatering? Because I've done that before as well. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to like um, 
things like watering your lawn. And this is a very much of a topic right now with, with the middle of the summer and so much uh, heat we have. You want to make sure that you're watering um, efficiently. You know, you could be um, watering once a day. You could be doing every other day. But you want to make sure that the cycle is, is good enough that you're going to saturate the area. And you're going to be, because you're always going to be losing water to evaporation in the summer. So if you just water your lawn at noon, which I don't recommend, I recommend you water <laughs> yeah. early, early in the morning before the sun is up. Um, you're gonna, if you were potentially watering at the wrong time of the day, you're really wasting, you know, up to 40% of that water. It's going to evaporate and it's going to hit the soil at the wrong time of the day. Um, and when it comes to watering plants traditionally with drip, I would say the same thing: water in the morning, get your water to the plants. That they're going to need that moisture throughout the day. Um, they're really not going to need it in the middle of the day. Um, and then also, if you start irrigating at night, be mindful that sometimes those insects that are out in your garden are going to be attracted to your plants now because you're providing water. So, you know, watering at the right time of day, I think, would be the number one advice I give somebody. So morning time, daybreak. Morning time is best. Um, even during a heat wave, a lot of plants will show signs of stress. They will wilt. They will um, look a little lethargic, as we all would when it's 110 degrees. But they will be fine if they just get that replenishment the next day. You know, awesome. Have you have you noticed um, mistakes that people are, like are making with their watering uh, on a when they, when they people bring in dead plants or yeah. whatever? Um, is it is it not deep enough? Is it not allowing the, the soil to dry out, or is it everything? It just depends. I, I think the most common thing is um, not watering deep enough. You know, maybe the frequency is there, and you know, sometimes you hear up stories of three times a day, but it's really for shallow and, and low amount of water. You want to do deep uh, soaking water. You know, you want to do it infrequently. So if that plant you just bought at the nursery, it's beautiful and it's looking great, you take it home, you're likely going to have to baby it for the first couple of weeks. So there will be little additional watering. But as long as your, your cycles are deep watering, um, let the plant dry its, you know, the soil dry out and let the plant take what it needs. Um, but I think the number one common thing is the not deep enough watering. Um, I also would say another one that comes up in the summertime is people going out the, with the garden hose in the late uh, afternoon hours and wanting to shower or rinse their plants. Um, it really, there's no benefit to that. There's more harm to those plants by you spraying them with water. Um, that plant tissue is going to be so hot that you adding water is only going to make it worse. So that, you know, that's one of those um, you know, urban legends out there that the plants get hot and you can shower them. Like we like a good spray when yeah, it's hot out. But. Exactly, you know, keep, that to, yeah, keep that to us and, and your pets and such. But for your plants, get the water to the base, uh, deep watering cycles. Um, be mindful that you, if you did purchase a new plant, it's gonna take a little bit more time. But as it season goes through, they will establish, you know, those roots follow the water. So if you're watering deep, those roots will anchor themselves in the soil, and then you'll see a more resilient plant. Sticking consistent with the watering is the number one uh, advice I give people, is look, just stay consistent with it, ride that pattern, the plant will adapt. You know, we do get hot, and usually the heat waves come and go, so you'll, you'll likely see the plant go a little bit stagnant during the heat wave, and it won't do much, but as soon as it cools down, you'll start seeing that it's growing, it's producing blooms. Uh, That's like my roses right now. Yeah. They were off and run in the spring, and then the last month they're like, no, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to hang out and not do much. Yeah, the, the, the plant, I mean, it's a living organism you're growing, so they will pause when, when the weather is at its worst. When it comes to watering your plants, it's, it's come up with a plan. And if you don't have a plan, you know, find the right person, professional. I mean, come over to me and we can talk about what you have, what your, you know, something as simple as your, your schedule, your life schedule. You could be a professional who's not home as much, but you still can have plants, you know, thrive. So, you know, let us know what you're needing um, and we, it can, we can adapt that to, to your schedule. Um, I think that would be my biggest advice is be realistic to what you want. Um, it's going to take an, a little bit of an investment in money and time, but I think it's going to work for what you have. Well, Carlos, man, thank you so much for uh, breaking off some time to talk irrigation with me. I love it. I think irrigation is like the missing piece of the puzzle for most of us gardeners and growers at home to, to really have success and, and also have success that's uh, a little bit easier to obtain. Um, so irrigation is was where it's at. So thank you so much for making time. Hopefully we can come back again and yes. have a, have another chat. Absolutely, I would love that. Yeah, irrigation is something that it's you know we all have to deal with, 
but it's something that is really, really um, you know, gratifying and it's really something that I think everybody enjoys. Yeah, and thank you for your time, this was awesome. All right, we are back from our interview. Big thank you to Carlos. Go check him out at the Green Acres in Elk Grove. He's the store manager down there, so go say hi if you can. Um, and then, uh, you know, one last plug for Harvest Day, which is tomorrow, if you're listening on the day of this episode's release, it's Saturday, August 3rd. But don't worry. If you, if you didn't get it on your schedule, that's okay. Next week, we're going to do a whole episode about it. We're going to be doing out there. We're going to have some fun, right, oh, Kevin? Oh, yeah. I'm excited. We're Cannot gonna, wait. Yeah, get some coverage of the event. Some of our good friends from the show are featured speakers. Oh, yeah. A lot of garden friends out there. Oh, yeah. Even our producer, Greg, is going to be talking. So come back and listen next week. We're going to give you guys the rundown of Harvest Day 2024. And Kevin, take us out. Another awesome week talking plants. I'm telling you, irrigation systems, they are the way to go, man. They really bring on the success. So uh, until next week, garden friends, I'm wishing you all an amazing week in your own gardens and your lives. Hey, life's too short. Get dirty out in that garden. Please garden for love, cultivate some joy, and please never stop growing. We'll see you next time, garden friends. <laughs>